today as we open in worship I'm surrounded in this beautiful beautiful spot full of bluebells. Okay bird song. I can't recognise all of them but there's some beautiful sounds here and yet if I'm honest also I can hear traffic noise and I think I can still hear some of the noises I brought with me in my own mind, some of the thoughts and things to do. Today's theme is about how we hear the shepherd's voice, how we become practised in and grow in, our, in the ways that he speaks to us for our good and for our blessing. Let's hold that in mind as we open together in worship. Welcome to today's online service at St Francis. As we come to our time of confession today, perhaps you might want to use the image on the screen. It's the spot where I recorded the opener to the service. 
It's now cleared of distraction. It's just a moment in time. As we look back on recent events or weeks, what are the moments that we think we might have missed? The moments where God was speaking uh, to bring about a purpose or possibility in our lives or others. Are there moments uh, that we would wish had gone differently? You might want to pause the clip, have a conversation with God about how things have been, the things that you might regret or are sorry for. When you're ready, please join with me in this confession. We confess our, to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now the words of the absolution. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place 
in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. When I was a little girl, my parents tried to get me to ride a bike. Uh, my big brother was very proficient at riding his bike and uh, he went off in front and my parents uh, were trying to push me along on my bike, trying to encourage me to ride it on my own and saying, go on, you know, just follow him, just follow him. The encouragement was there to balance on my bike, to stop wobbling at the handlebars uh, so much, to look for my brother ahead and just to follow him and somehow within that master the craft of cycling. But I have to say it's something that even to this day I've not quite managed with ease. Uh, as a child I was far too scared to lift uh, my eyes from what was in front of me, my handlebars, to hear my parents and my brother's words of encouragement to try and help me make that um, sort of pedal of faith rather than step of faith to learn how to cycle properly. Fear had me listening only to the rapid heartbeat that I'd got because I was so scared to ride a bike. I couldn't, because of that, listen out for any other voice. What we listen out for and uh, what, or, or more importantly, who we follow is at the heart of our Bible reading today. Those verses from John chapter 10. Have you noticed though sometimes how we can have selective hearing? Uh, those times when we will hear only what we want to hear. Or we might sort of half listen to someone, but really are eyes and our ears and our hearts are quite literally somewhere else. Today's scripture is all about listening and hearing, hearing and listening and then following the voice of Jesus. So we picture the scene that's in scripture. There's a crowd that are with Jesus, walking along with him and they're asking Jesus to tell them plainly if he is the Messiah. And they're saying to Jesus, you know, don't keep us in suspense. Come on, tell us, are you the Messiah? And Jesus says, even what, what do you mean? What more do I need to say? The miracles that I'm doing in my father's name speak for me. Sometimes we might be hard of hearing or hard of seeing when it comes to Jesus. Are we listening to his voice and hearing what he says and then responding as the Lord has directed? Or do we sort of try and uh, keep Jesus at arm's length, as it were, because we might be afraid of what a life of following him may bring in its wake? Every day. You and I hear a lot of diverse voices in the world around us, not just the physical sounds that are just part of being alive, but think also of the things that we turn over in our hearts and minds, uh, uh, those things that you know can have some power and influence over the, the sort of things that we should do or uh, what we should want, how we should be, uh, how we should respond and react according to various circumstances and so on. It's interesting that the voice of criticism, when that's spoken over us, is often the one that we can hear the loudest. And yet Jesus' voice is the voice of love, it's the voice of peace, and it's a voice of welcome. So how do we discern which voice to listen to, which voice to follow, as others try to influence us, to persuade us, to lead us? If I said, a Mars a day, I wonder if you would reply, helps us work, rest and play. 
I think it depends sort of what generation you are. If, if you're my generation, then you'll be quite familiar with that advert. If you're a young person, you may not have heard that before at all. But so goes the advert about a simple chocolate Mars bar. Advertising of any product or any lifestyle works when there are those many voices that are telling you to believe this, to buy that, to do this, to wear such and such and so on. And the news and politicians that we tune into, it seems there are so many opposing voices, so many different viewpoints and so on. So we end up asking, you know, who do we trust? Who's telling the truth? Who can we rely on? And peer pressure and family pressure as well. Sometimes there can be a lot of voices that are competing for our attention. And sometimes maybe we have to admit that we just want to switch them all off for a little bit sometimes. But, you know, when it comes to the essential question of faith and how to live our lives as followers of Jesus, we have to ask ourselves, whose voice am I listening to? Whose voice do I trust? What voice do I choose to hear to help me follow Jesus more clearly, more closely, day by day? Martin and I are uh, blessed with having two grandchildren, uh, uh, two little girls, and uh, uh, one of them is still a baby. And even though she's just learning to uh, talk at the moment, way before she could even say her first words, we would notice that she would recognise her mummy's and daddy's voices. If we'd been looking after the girls and uh, mummy and daddy came in the door and just called out hello, instinctively, the little one would turn her eyes to the door, ready and you know, expecting mummy and daddy to come walking in. I don't think she's particularly unique in that. I think it's a, a, an innate instinctive thing that children have to know how to listen and hear the voices of those that they love and that love them unconditionally. And it's no different, I don't think, for the children of God. Listening, hearing, so important. Those in the medical profession tell us that the last sense to leave a dying person is their sense of hearing. And so that's why we keep speaking those gentle words of peace, those words of grace, of love, of thankfulness, of forgiveness. Speaking such tender words of love and of peace to the dying person as they gently slip away. What we speak, what we hear, who we hear, what we listen to, who we listen to, is so important. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. It's not so much about us knowing Jesus. It's more about Jesus knowing us. The sheep don't have to intellectually know or to theologically get Jesus to follow him. Simply it's about in faith turning to him, tuning in to Jesus, tuning into his voice, tuning in to Jesus' wavelength, to Jesus' way of life and step by step learning to walk the way of Jesus. When we listen to that voice of Jesus, you know, deliberately listen for that voice of Jesus. You know, it, it could be that we're reading scripture and there's something there about Jesus or about the nature uh, of God that makes us think, you know, maybe prompts our conscience or gives us food for thought. Or when we pray, uh, you know, whether that's praying out loud with words that can be heard, whether it's, you know, just praying silently in our hearts um, uh, and we, we just pause and wait because we're wanting, we're desperate for God to answer that prayer. We want to hear what God's saying. Or, you know, when we just give ourselves some space to be still and quiet and we just sense that God is there by his presence. Or when we get that prompting in our conscience to do the right thing, you know, for something that would honour Jesus. It's then that we're listening intently for the voice of the Good Shepherd, the voice of love the voice of power. God only ever wants what is good and wholesome and healing for his children.
So listening for that voice of Jesus, it's about honing in on the deepest, the most authentic voice that you will ever know and following it. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. Of course, we know that we don't just listen with our ears, do we? We listen and we filter what we hear through our experience, through our emotions, through our personal circumstances. So when we're listening to Jesus, when we're listening for Jesus, we need to remember also to listen with the ears of our hearts to really pray to hear the Lord. I have to do this many times to ask the Lord to unstop my ears um, so that we can really hone in on what the Lord wants to speak into our lives, into our situations, into our circumstances. What we hear, what we listen to, influences us. And scripture calls us to listen, to hear, the voice of Jesus, to have our hearts grounded in love and grace as we seek to follow him as Lord and Saviour. And you know, when we stumble and get it wrong, which of course we all do, we all do, then by his mercy, as we repent, as we get back up on our feet and carry on, we know that in him we're loved, forgiven and redeemed. So where are our hearts grounded? What are the key drivers that we listen and tune into emotionally and spiritually and experientially? If our hearts are grounded in fear, you know, like mine was when I was trying to ride that bike as a little girl, uh, then fear can shape our hearing and our, our living so that we never come to that place of enjoying the freedom and the forgiveness that's there in Jesus for the asking. That's what fear can do to us. Or if our hearts are grounded in suspicion, for example, then that will make us sceptical of what we hear. It even makes us sceptical of the good news that we hear. And it shapes our outlook, prohibiting us from really giving our all to the Lord and to others with joy and peace and with excitement and with hope. But you know, if our hearts are grounded in compassion, then that's going to make us eager and active in attending to the issues that are affecting the world around us, empowering us for mission and for ministry, as John Wesley puts it so beautifully, motivating us to do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways that you can, in all the places that you can, at all the times that you can, to all the people that you can, for long, as long as you ever can. You know what I mean? Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Listening for Jesus becomes the most crucial thing for Christians. No other voice takes precedence. And that's partly why our gatherings together each week, whether it's in person or whether it's online, why those gatherings are so important, so vital. Not only do we come to give God all his worth uh, and all that we believe his worth through our worship, but as we come to hear uh, on uh, our, our gatherings together from God's word, as we pray together, as we sing our hymns uh, of worship, of praise, uh, of even of lament in the holy silences, in the times of ministry, you know, that are so rich, do we hear within that that we're loved? Do we truly hear that? We're God's beloved children, because that is God's truth for us. Do we hear the voice of hospitality, that we're welcome, because that is God's truth for us? Do we hear the voice of generosity, that we've been given the wonderful gift of life in all its fullness, that we're gifted just because we are? That is God's truth for us. Do we hear the voice of justice and compassion? That it's good to treat others as we would want to be treated ourselves? Are we listening to make sure that children do have food, that families have homes, that the sick can be cared for, that refugees can be welcomed, 
that the vulnerable can be provided for, not just in this week of Christian aid as it begins, but week by week by week. The voice of justice, meaning human dignity is respected and where celebration, restoration and renewal are ushered in. For this is God's truth for us. What we're listening to, choosing to listen out for, will fill our hearts, it will stir our souls and it will fuel our actions and our emotions. If we're listening for the voice of love and hospitality and generosity and justice and compassion and hope, nothing in the whole world will be able to snatch us away. Jesus says that in his word in John 10, 29. It's Jesus' promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, that's about Jesus' power, it's about Jesus' passion, it's about Jesus' purpose. Nothing can separate us from the grace and love of God through Jesus our Saviour. Now is that good news or is it good news? Only one answer to that. The Lord is here, his Spirit is with us. Amen. Let's respond to what Lynn's been talking about. At this point, we often pause to receive the Holy Spirit, to pray. We didn't do that this week, but I'm going to ask you to do it a little bit differently. Would you join me in using the images on the screen to reflect on some questions? And then would you pause and ask God to speak to you about them? Pause the clip and invite Holy Spirit to speak into these and other questions that he lays on your heart. Who or what are you following at this time? If you are following someone or something, who are they following? Where is God in that priority order? How might God want to speak to you afresh today about how you might follow him differently or additionally in a new way or an old way? Just pause and ask him, how are we doing, God? Holy Spirit, enlighten me. Show me what you have for me. I'm listening.
side Forever lift him high With all creation cry God we praise you oh, oh, oh. We praise you oh, oh, oh. We praise you oh, oh, oh. We praise you declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. This coming week is Mental Health Awareness Week, and with that in mind, this is how we've themed our prayers. Father God, we pray for those who are anxious, isolated, lonely or grieving. We pray for all whom shielding has caused separation from friends and networks and loved ones. We pray for those whose mental health has suffered because of the impact of the pandemic on our lives, our jobs and our economy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we lament stigma and prejudice that still sometimes affects attitudes to mental health illness. We pray for those who've not been made welcome in our churches, communities, homes or hearts. We remember especially all whose mental health has suffered because of exclusion, prejudice, rejection or bullying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all whose thoughts or feelings are troubled. We pray for those who are experiencing depression, anxiety and fear. For those who feel that you are far away from them. For those who might feel that life is not worth living. We pray for those whose high moods endanger their well-being. We pray for those who hear voices. We pray for those whose thoughts are dominated by unhealthy beliefs. We pray for those who struggle with cravings, perhaps around alcohol, drugs, food, gambling or sex. 
We pray for those who suffer from anorexia and all whose body image is a source of distress to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for relatives, friends and carers. All who struggle with the impact of mental health on any aspect of their lives, relationships, home or families. We pray for local services. We pray for anyone who's been traumatised by any form of abuse. We pray for those who suffer mental health, ill health in older age, for those whose memories and faculties are taken away from them by dementia, and for those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray that as Christ's body here on earth and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we might serve you in bringing healing and new life to those who suffer in mind and soul, both in our churches and wider society. Save us from shallow answers that might add to the suffering of others. Help us to listen well. We pray that our churches may grow into places where there is real welcome, nurture, encouragement in places that include one another. May we know your presence with us. May we find you in one another. And may we be a blessing. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope that today's service has been a real encouragement. I hope you found some help and ideas about how we all might take steps to grow in our relationship with God because we can hear him better or perhaps we put even more time aside to do just that. Those questions are great, aren't they? What is our heart grounded in? And how is it that he speaks to us individually? How can we tune in more to that? May those questions bless us all as we go into the weeks ahead and to, into this week in particular. And now the blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all, now and for always. Amen. My own sheep will hear my voice. And they will follow me.